Hello everybody and welcome to a new episode. Today I'm going to show you how I create the toolpath for making such decorative moldings in MDF boards to create drawer fronts, cabinet doors and so on. It's possible to make drawer fronts or cabinet doors by simply going to a spreadsheet and modifying the dimensions of the board. You can see it automatically updates the toolpath, the size of the board in the 3D view and everything runs very smooth and very fast. So let's get started to create the toolpath and the 3D view for this type of moldings. The first thing that I'm going to do is go to the spreadsheet workbench and create a new spreadsheet. Here we will enter the values, we will give them names so we can refer them when making sketches and moving objects around. So let's first define the board dimensions, board length, board width and board thickness. We also need a corner radius and an offset, the distance from the decorative molding to the edge of the board. We also need to define the dimensions of the bit because bits may vary. Of course, if you have a different shape, you'll have to change the bit. I'll show you where to modify that. But for now, let's set the dimensions that I've taken from the datasheet of the bit that I'm going to use. Bit height and bit diameter. And the final values that we are going to need to make the toolpath is the cutting depth and the step down. So let's give them some values, a board length of 600, a board width of 230. I'm going to make a drawer front, a thickness of 18 millimeters. It's the usual MDF panel thickness here. A corner radius of 20, an offset of 30. The bit height and the bit diameter are defined in inches. So I will use metric approximations, half an inch height, which is 12.7 millimeters, three quarters inch diameter, which is 19.05, the cutting depth, I I will set it to 7 and a step down of 3. We want to refer these values when creating the sketch. We can refer them using the row and the column, but if we move values around in the spreadsheet, all the references will break. So what I like to do is go to each field where the value is and go to the upper right corner and give them aliases so we can refer them no matter where we move them around. Board underscore length. We cannot use spaces when defining alias names. Board width, radius, offset, bit height, bit diameter, cutting underscore depth, and step down. Of course, using underscore, as I told you, you cannot use spaces when defining variable names. That's all that we need to do in the spreadsheet workbench in our spreadsheet. We can leave it open because we are going to modify things around to make sure everything works okay when changing values. Now let's go back to the 3D view and the first thing that we need to do is create the board so we'll go to the part design workbench create a new body rename it board and create a sketch in the xy plane i will make a rectangle of course with one corner in the origin to give it a length i select the line i can either use the icon from the top or press the l key now i'll press equal or press this small icon with a function it's enter an expression and i will write the name of the spreadsheet and the value we have defined for the length of the board which is board underscore length press enter until everything closes you can now see that i have a length constraint for this line equal to the value in the spreadsheet let's do the same for the height press the i key for vertical length press equal to enter an expression spreadsheet board width but the sketch here i will also enter an expression press the equal key spreadsheet board underscore thickness. I prefer to select them from the drop down list because this way I avoid the typos that I might make and break the formula. Close the pad. Now we have defined the board. The second step is to define the line, the path that the toolbit should cover. For that I will create a new sketch in the xy plane of course. First let's make a rectangle and give it a length and a height. The length should be spreadsheet board length and I will subtract from this two times the offset one on the left and one on the right I will do the same for the height board width minus two times the offset but I can still move it around so I have to place it I will select this point in the corner press L for horizontal distance you can see that by selecting just one point it automatically reverts to setting the horizontal or vertical distance to the origin. Since the corner of the board is in the origin, I want this distance to be equal to the offset, so I'll press equal spreadsheet offset. Do exactly the same. Select the point, press I for a vertical distance constraint, press equal spreadsheet 
offset. I still need to make the rounded corners. I will go here, select the create arc tool, set the center of the arc in the corner of the rectangle, start with a point on line on one of the lines and move to the other line make sure the constraint for point on line is activated if for some reason you mistakenly click somewhere you can just select the point select the line press o or this button constraint point onto object you can see it goes back where it should i don't need these two segments so i will go to the trim tool trim edge click here click here again you can see that those two lines disappeared so this is the path that i want the tool to follow i still need to give it a radius but i will do that after i will make the same thing for all the four corners i will select all the arcs and press the e key or the equal button from here then i will select either one of them i like to select the one closest to the origin press r or the radius constraint here and give it a radius equal to spreadsheet radius of course I want to make the center point and this end point from the line make them vertical so I press the V to make a vertical constraint also select this point and this point and press the H key for a horizontal constraint do the same for all the corners it turns green which means it's perfectly determined it doesn't have any degree of freedom so I will press the last horizontal constraint and the entire sketch is fully constrained it cannot move anywhere it depends on the values that I'm entering in the spreadsheet since uh, the board was the active body when I created the sketch it resides in the board but I don't want that so I will drag it to the top of the tree in the document let's hide the board for a little and I want to sweep a path a cutout along this sketch we are going to define the shape to make a cutout in this board for the 3d view and then we'll move on to the path workbench i will hide the board and create the new sketch make it in the xz plane it's a pretty basic tool bit i will create first an arc then two more arcs for the second round over we still have to make two lines on either side of the tool bit and then the top line this defines the shape that our tool bit can cut now we have to give it constraints to have a perfectly defined shape take this arc and the origin and set a point onto object constraint the center point of the left arc different from the center point of the right arc so i will select them both and give a horizontal constraint this segment is half of the total height and these two arcs have equal heights i will turn the construction geometry select the line tool make a vertical line that touches the x-axis and i will select the top segment of the tool bit the line that we've just created and press e for equal constraint i want this point to be in the middle of the distance between this point and the origin so i'll create two more lines construction geometry also one constraint to the x-axis then select this point and this point and give them a horizontal constraint after that i will select both lines and press E or the equal constraint button. The join here between the two arcs should be continuous so I will select this arc this arc it doesn't matter the left or the right and give them a tangent constraint you can see a warning and point to end point tangency was applied the coincident constraint was deleted I will just press ok you can see now it flows correctly this segment which is the diameter of the tool bit I will select it press L key press equal or this button and type spreadsheet bit diameter then select either one of the corners of the tool bit press i it will show up a length constraint from the origin to this point a vertical length constraint press equal and type spreadsheet bit height we need the connection point between the two segments to be at the same height to be horizontal so i will select them press the horizontal constraint we have a fully constrained sketch this defines the projection of the shape of our tool bit close the sketch move it outside of the body the origin is in the center and in the bottom part of the tool bit i want it to be placed in this corner so i can start a sweep along this path so let's move it to take it there let's go to the attachment position as you know when modifying a sketch you cannot use the placement it's always attachment position so let's change the y value to bring it in this corner of course we're going to use formula so it updates automatically press the equal key offset plus radius which is the radius of these corners you can see it moving upwards why is that because you can see here at the support field it resides in the xz plane so all the coordinates are are changed according to the x z plane this would be y this would be x and towards us it would be z instead of changing the y 
I will delete the formula, click clear, enter zero again. I will change the Z value because that's the depth here looking from this point of view. So minus one multiplied. We need to enter parenthesis because otherwise the order of the operation would result in a weird value. We still need to move it to the right looking from upwards. This would be the X. Press equal spreadsheet offset. I have my two sketches, the one that defines the shape and the one that defines the path. I will go to the part workbench, not part design. It's possible to make it using the part design workbench, but I'm used to the one in the part workbench. Select the sweep tool. Sketch 002 is the profile. I will click on this arrow to move it from the available profiles to selected profile. Click on the sweep path button holding the control key down. I will select all the lines. Click on done. Click on OK. Wait a little. And you can see that the shape is correctly done. I still need to make some minor adjustments. I will go to the sweep and change the transition from right corner to round corner because that's the way the rotor bit will leave the outside corners. I can now open in the tree the sweep and press space on both sketches to hide them. Make sure everything is okay. Depending on the values in the spreadsheet, the sweep might break. If you make some changes and everything breaks, it's because of the rotation in the corners. So you need to modify those values until you have a good result. The final step to obtaining a 3D model of the board, I will make the board visible. Change the height which is the z value of the sweep use a formula press equal it spreadsheet the board thickness but i want to subtract from that the depth that we are going to make the cut in the board so here i have cutting depth press enter the sweep has moved upwards it's a positive sweep it's not a cutout for that i will select the board select the sweep and use the cut tool and everything disappeared i have a warning on the cut sweep is not a solid that's because i made a mistake i forgot to change the value here for solid from false to true now everything is back as it should be you can see i have the final shape of the board that i'm going to cut let's just rename the sketches sketch 2 to bit shape sketch 1 to bit path so it's easier to add them in the path workbench when we are going to make the cnc path so let's go to the spreadsheet change some dimensions let's change the offset give it a value of 50 go back to the 3d view it computes exactly as it should let's change the radius to 30 it still computes correctly but if i give a corner radius too high let's give it a 100 you can see i have an error on the sweep so this is fully parametric but fully parametric doesn't mean you can simply write any value let's get back to the initial values 20 for the corner radius 30 for the offset so now let's move to the second part of the video let's go to the path workbench select the final board i have renamed the cut final board so it's easier to find it also select the bit path this is the sketch in the sweep it's very important to also select it because selecting faces on this board i have to set some offsets it doesn't always work as it should so selecting the sketch will always result in a usable toolpath create a new job make sure the bit path and the final board are selected i don't want these extensions uh, one millimeters on either side so i will go for each of them and scroll down a little to make them zero i could have used the create box option but these values don't depend on the dimensions of the board and changing them will lead to some weird results so let's go back to extends model bound box and change all these values to zero make sure the origin is correctly placed go to the tools and add a tool i could define a custom tool bit with the exact shape of the cutting bit that i have but there's no point because i cannot use any tool in the free cut path workbench to make this cutout by simply matching the tool bit shape and the shape of the cutout so what i like to do for this kind of operations is just use a an end mill a simple end mill because what's important is where the center and the bottom of the tool bit will pass so any tool bit any end mill is okay i will select the six millimeters give it a horizontal speed of 3000 i hope the bit is quality enough to accept this kind of speed if not i will adjust the values later i will remove the default tool make sure that in the output tab that i have a grbl processor that's the kind of machine that i have press ok and now i have the job so i want a tool path to mill this channel in the board i want it to automatically adapt to the size of the board i want to 
be able to change the dimensions of this tool bit. The tool that I found that is the most suitable for such an operation is the profile. So I will select the profile operation. I would expect to find the sketch here, but it is below the board because that's where I defined it. So go to base geometry, start selecting these lines, holding the control key down, zoom out, make sure I have all the path selected, click on add. And when clicking apply, you can see that the path is created up to the bottom of the board which i don't want but we will change it later let's go to the operation tab and the most important thing that i need to do is uncheck use compensation because it will move the cutter head further away from the line with half of the tool diameter which i don't want so i will uncheck use compensation click on apply you can see now the tool path is exactly on top of the sketch i will close this go to the operations group select the profile start depth is always the top of the board which is okay it will adapt if i change the board height the final depth i want it to be a different value from zero so i'll press the expression button and i will write spreadsheet board thickness and i will subtract from this cutting depth the profile recalculated you can see it stops exactly on the center of this round face but you can see it makes a very deep pass as you know in the spreadsheet i also have a value which is step down i want to use it so i will go back to the profile here i have step down which is the tool diameter i don't want that press on the expression and write spreadsheet step down from now on the step down value will be the one in the spreadsheet let's test it give it a value of one you can see i have several passes with a one millimeter in between them i will go to the setup sheet of the job here i have two values clearance height offset and safe height offset i will modify them both to 35 millimeters select the job export the file it's called post process click on save here you can inspect the g-code but before moving on to the cnc and making a test cut i still need to make some tests by changing the bit height and the bit diameter values also the board dimensions to make sure the path uh, the profile will update accordingly first of all let's change the board width the path is according to the new board defined let's change its length to 800 the path updated again let's change the thickness to 50 make a huge value the path went up and starts still from the top of the board and goes down seven millimeters let's make it two just to make sure everything is okay the cutting bit will just engage with the smallest part of the first radius and the shape will look different this is one important thing to remember by using the sketch that we've defined for the bit path i avoided a topological naming problem because if using some lines in the final board by changing the depth the faces names will change because sometimes i have some faces sometimes i don't have them let's give it a depth of six millimeters you can now see i have more faces which means the name of the faces have changed using them as reference for the profile would lead to errors so it's very important to use the sketch not the actual 3d view to avoid the topological naming problem when changing the cutting depth so let's revert all the values to the dimensions of the board i will measure it make sure the dimensions here match the dimensions of the board that i'm using that I'm milling so now I can save the file and open Universal Geco Sender go to the CNC and mill the actual board 